Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla. Today we are talking about innovation and disruptive technology. Because we have seen this play out many times before, so we have a lot of data to look back at. But people have a tendency to get the adoption of disruptive technology wrong. And not just by a little, we are talking about a hundred X wrong. And we are about to see something really special when we are talking about disruption. And why I think people will get this one even more wrong. So let's take a look and let's dive right in. innovations never gets adopted in a linear line. Never happened in the entire human history. They always come in an S-curve. Always. So don't know why seemingly smart people continue to forecast the future in linear adoptions. It has never happened before. Why should it do now? when technology is even improving faster than before. But the S-curve makes disruptive technology seems like it is exploding and become a mass market thing much faster than most people think is possible. When we went from horse to cars, it took about 20 years to go from zero cars to 95% adoption. But when we hit that tipping point, when we reached the bottom of the S-curve, it only took the whole transportation sector 10 years to go from 11% to 81%. And that is typically when it starts to slow down again. So in only 10 years, 70% of the entire transportation sector in the US was changed from horse to cars. And keep in mind, that they had to build the whole infrastructure as well at the same time. And the adoption of new technology is only getting faster. The S-curve is getting steeper. And remember, the price will also go down on a slope like it does with many new technology. And when we talk about EV, the price slope and the adoption S-curve has hardly started. And the so-called expert has been just as wrong on this one in the past as with everything else. The EIA, Energy Information Administration, an independent statistic and analysis company, predicted in 2010 that there would be about 118 EVs in 2035. Nope, not 118,000. No, 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 just 118. <laughs> when Tesla was already a public company and made more cars than their predictions. So even the so-called expert is usually wrong when it comes to predicting the future. And this was just one extreme example. Another great example of so-called expert that got the disruption of the cell phone wrong. Mackenzie was hired to predict the future for AT&T in 1985 to tell them if they invested in the cell phone technology, how many subscribers would there be in the year 2000? Only 15 years into the future, Mackenzie predicted 900,000 subscribers. The actual number of subscribers was 109 million. They were off by 120x. And that was only trying to predict 15 years in the future. And they were experts. But people just don't seem to predict the future with S-curves in mind, even though that is always how it goes. It is only a question of when will we hit that tipping point. And remember, most disruptions happen from the outside in. That is why I don't have the biggest faith in the old manufacturers will catch up to Tesla because they are too big and heavy to turn around and the technology that is coming from the outside is not something they are expert at. So the company that is coming from the outside is first of all Tesla that kickstarted the whole revolution. But now we see companies like Rivian joining the party and will deliver electric pickup truck even before Ford. 
and that is Ford's biggest market, and they are not even running fast enough. And then we have companies like NIO, Xping, Lucid, and many, many more coming from the outside, helping making this disruption happen. Just like with the smartphone, Apple and Google had never made a phone before they entered the smartphone market, but is now owning over 90% of the smartphone market. And Nokia, and Motorola, and so on are no more. And the adoption of EVs can happen just as fast as any other technology. Just look at Norway, how fast they are converting. And that is even before the very affordable cars have hit the market. Just look at Norway. They have already hit the bottom of the S-curve and are now on the way up. They were already at 50% electric vehicle sales in 2020. And even Volkswagen expect their sales in Norway in 2021 will be 90% electric. So Norway would gain 40% more EV market share in just one year. That is crazy fast. So even in countries like Norway, the S-curve is already here, even before we have really affordable EVs. The best-selling EV in Norway in 2020 was the Audi e-tron, that is by no means a cheap car. But this is only going to improve. We have hardly started the S-curve of the adoption or the slope of the price of the EVs and batteries and manufacturing that Tesla is also disrupting at the same time, making it cheaper and cheaper to manufacture EVs as well, and not just the batteries. So it will all come down. If we take batteries, for example, they have dropped 87% in price in just the last 10 years. And many, including Rethink X Expert, is expecting it to come down another 80% in the next 10 years, making my prediction of $20 per kilowatt hour very reasonable. So we are about here now, in the very bottom hardly on the curve yet. In 2020, the plug-in vehicle market share was only 4.2%. So we have hardly started the revolution yet, but it is about to explode over the next five years. It did go up by 43% from 2019 to 2020, while global light vehicle market decreased by 14%. So the price has already started going down, but Tesla will really push this forward like they have pushed the whole industry to go electric. They will also show the way of getting the production of the cars down. So I do believe that the price for an EV in long term will not just become as cheap as a nice vehicle, but they will become much cheaper. You will, in 10 years time, be able to get a little cheap electric car for less money than you have ever been able to get a new ICE vehicle for. Just think about it, the ICE car has over 2,000 moving parts, where an electric vehicle has about 20 moving parts. The ICE car is far more complicated than the EV to produce. It is only because it is a new technology that EV is still more expensive to produce. But this will change dramatically. Also, the car's true cost of ownership on top of this is much better. And they will have a longer lifespan on top of this as well. Why do you think Amazon has bought 100,000 EV delivery vans? because they are so eager to go green? No, it's about money. This is a humongous savings for Amazon to have EV delivery vans instead of ICE ones. The EV will be the only car anyone wants in 10 years time, because anything else will just be financially insane. I will even go so far to say in five years time, it will be financially insane to buy an ICE car. But we will probably not be able to produce enough EVs to meet the demand yet at that point. But this will only make the disruption go even faster. As I said before, yes, Tesla will come out soon with a $25,000 small compact car. But that is only the beginning. I still believe that the Tesla Model 3 will come down to this price point as well and probably even cheaper without the full self-driving calculated into the price of course as we have talked about before the full self-driving car will change 
everything and turn the whole transportation sector on its head. But this is where Tesla comes in and is just here at the right place at the right time with the right technologies. Just like we have seen with the smartphone that came out in 2007. But that was not only the iPhone, the Android smartphone also came out in 2007. Because every technology needed to make this work was there in 2007. It was the right time. That is why it didn't happen in 2005 or 2009. Because it all came together in 2007. And I believe that Tesla is working on many technologies simultaneously that will all come together within the next decade. And that is why if you have plans for something in the 2030s with electric cars, you will not be a part of this disruption. You will be too late to the party. Because Tesla is going to have the battery production down with thousands of gigawatt hours of production to produce millions of cars. They will have the manufacturing of the cars down, making cars with very few parts with their giga casting machines, making the cars faster and cheaper to produce than ever before. They will have full self-driving software down and have a full self-driving fleet of cars within this decade as well changing everything and they will have the software down to make their cars an entertaining or productivity hub they will have the charging network down with hundreds of thousands of charging all over the world they will start producing 10,000 chargers per year this year and probably only going to scale that up going forward so within this decade, I believe that Tesla will have all these technologies down. So at the end of this decade, they will probably produce 20 million full self-driving cars per year and the biggest charging network in the world and the cheapest cars in the world to produce. If you think disruption has happened fast before in the past, I think we have a very special treat to look forward to with Tesla. Because they do not only disrupt the ICE car and make it into an EV, but also the full self-driving and the cheaper manufacturing of cars and the cost of batteries and the production capacity of batteries and the whole charging infrastructure. Everything. It is all coming together this decade. And one company is leading the way in all of this disruption. The S-curve we are about to see is probably going to be the steepest one yet. The tipping point is going to be within the next couple of years and then it will simply explode. Well, the EV market share is only about 4.5% so <laughs> it will take decades. Well, next year it will probably double again as it did last year and be close to 10% market share and... Do you remember how fast it happened 100 years ago when it hit a tipping point of 10%? They hit 81% within 10 years. And this disruption is coming faster. After 2030, there will not be much ice market left because no one wants to buy them anymore. And therefore, nobody wants to build them anymore because they will be a bad business at that point and that would only make the adoption and this disruption happen even faster. And when we have full self-driving in the equation, this is where Tesla might become too big. Because full self-driving is a software and if we look at software industries, there are pretty much always only a couple of players sitting on like 90% of the market. Like we see with macOS and Windows like iOS and Android and so on and so on. So this is why Tesla is going to become one of the biggest disruptions we have ever seen. Not just changing the industry from ICE to EVs, because they have like five disruptive industries coming together at the same time and one of them being software, full self-driving. This will be something we have never seen before. I don't think we even have the imagination to understand how this will change our life in so many ways other than just the way we drive. But it will surely be very interesting to follow this disruption. That will happen within the next 10 years.
And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.